Get ready to wobble the noodle. That was awesome. Today's job here in Wisconsin. See that weird one over there? That one comes out. Damien found a shed. Are you making a video? No. Don't worry. It's just a still photo. What's up, Elliot? Yeah, I shed my other one over here somewhere. <laughs> My wife's at home having the can't find my wallet drama. So I'm kind of hoping I get a text soon that says I found it. Cause I'm not really in a place to check the bank account and make sure that our accounts are being drained by somebody who found her wallet or whatever. She's freaking out and I was like, it's okay baby, I prayed for you this morning that you would get encouraged. <laughs> oh. And so I expect it. I expect some level of encouragement to happen. But so far, it's not been that encouraging. There's another text. It's Willie again. He's so cool. Willie is a board certified master arborist. I helped him with his big redwood and he's the class act. That whole Redwood project was so massive that had so many things going on in my mind that by the time we were done with that, I have probably aged. My eyes looked like two pee holes in the still. By the time I was done with that job. And he doesn't want it to stand in front of it either. No butts in front of it. Okay. Hold it. Found your wedge. In the cut. Oh, it is in the cut. Okay. <laughs> See if I can get that one to swing in. Yeah. Yep. I think I'm going to throw a line up in there. It's just going to be easier to deal with this trunk and contour of it. So it's leaned out and twisting. So as soon as I go this way, it wants to take me to the bottom of the lean, which is not where, really where I feel like being right now for climbing. So I will do this. Oh, that's a pretty greedy toss. Yep, that was a greedy toss. But you know, when you lose your wallet and then find it, it's such a happy thing to find it that almost like you're glad you lost it what was that like three minutes i don't know but i know what you would have told me if i tried to throw that when i first started <laughs> off. just stepped on my rope So yeah, now I'm on the underside and I gotta get to the backside if I want to climb more comfortably, but I don't feel like it right now. So I'll just go up the underside because the underside doesn't try to take you anywhere else. <laughs> doesn't try to tip you. I'll take some slings too. Maybe don't give me all the slings right yet until I, well, I guess I'll take them. I, I got suspenders. Not speed lining yet. I'm just getting some of this lower stuff because I gotta go so high on this tree that I figure I'll get some of this low stuff while I'm here. What's up guys? Damien on the rope here, holding it for August. One hand in it. You wanna link up? Yeah, after this piece. Yeah. 
Yeah, August got a weird little pine today. But he's not phased by it, of course. So I just set my climb line again. You know, another 10 more feet and I'm just sort of walking up it. I'm just clearing everything off right now. I haven't gone up to set rigging or anything because that's so boxed in here. You guys are clamped onto a tree limb from a different tree. It's like we're kind of trapped in here. So speed lining out is going to be impeded somewhat. So I'm not even sure if I'll do that. I may just keep rigging it straight down over the fence there. I don't know yet. Maybe I'll anchor the speed line about 15 feet above me real quick and speed line some of these so that at least they get away from the fence a little before they come to the ground. So you can't see, but let's show you. See, the fence is... The fence is close. If I, if I rig them straight down, then they'll fight the fence every time. If I try to speed line them this way, then they may tangle up in the adjacent trees, but I'm gonna try it. I'm gonna try to speed line them because they only have to go far enough to clear that fence. And then it's like one stop shop. They're on the ground and they haven't had to lower it down and fiddle with it. All right, first speed line, we'll see what she does. Yeah, that made it way out there. I'd say that was success. That was worth it. Headache. I think I'm gonna head up there because it's gonna be worth it. Yeah, all this resetting is, it eats up a lot of time. Yeah, when you have to keep resetting your rigging line and your tie-in, it just, it's better to just go to the top. If we're gonna use it, we're gonna use it. All right, so here we are at the ridiculously stratospherically tall top. And I've set the speed line. It's not really the speed line I like. I like static for that, but we'll use it because it's long enough. And I've got my tie-in under it here. And the stuff doesn't have to go far. It can't go far because of all the impediment of the other limbs. And so, We'll go down there to where I stopped fighting the limbs off one by one, resetting my rigging, and we'll start zipping them out. It'll be a little bit faster. I've got a whole magazine full of slings here. It's not really a magazine, it's a it's just a a molly. But I'll show you what that looks like down there. Trees are tall here, so even my 200 foot rope, there's no way it'll be long enough so I'll probably want to oh I felt that I felt that bad spot on my rope where I stepped on it with my spur it's not horrible yet but it's also not good anyway I have to put a knot in the end of my rope down here in case I like took off to repel or something and popped through the end of the rope because there's it's not long enough and the actually I could stop here and put some slings on while I'm passing by these trees anyway that's how I fell years ago I went through the end of the rope I had I had cut the rope below me and I didn't know that it was cut and so when I went to repel you see DRT as I as I hold, push this and go down, see how the rope's coming up? Well, if your rope was short, it would go through there and you'd fall, right? So I had cut it, and when I went to repel, I didn't look, I didn't know it was cut, and it shot through my blade hitch and through my hand and 
down I went. Very, very tragic experience, really. And it was funny because I was thinking I was so cool right in that moment. Like, right in that moment, I was like at the pinnacle of coolness. I was a young climber, and I was starting to get pretty fast, and in my mind, I was thinking, I must look so cool to those people down there. <laughs> Looking down on somebody, thinking you're cooler. Pride goes before the fall. Down you go. It was insane. That was quite a learning experience on many levels. Anyway, that's what I'm talking about. I want to not... See, my rope's off the ground down there. So, like, if you got bees or something came after you and you panicked and you started started burning down and you had forgotten that your rope was short or let's say you cut yourself and you were bleeding out and you wanted to get to the ground quick and then you add falling on top of that issue because you don't have a knot in the end of your rope there's just things that can happen that I don't believe in a lot of safety redundancies because I like to be real deliberate and and go with the flow, but I'll take a knot in the end of my rope. Hey, uh, Damien, can you reach my rope? Put a knot in it. Coming at you. Coming at you. Go slack with it. And tighten it up again. That's the advantage of getting it all hooked up. It, it flies off the tree once you, you do the prep work. Damien wants me to give you a message, YouTube. He says, tell them that now with that, we have it all prepped and rigged for speed. They're flying off the tree like a monkey beaver harness flies off the shelf. I did not say that. I should really take the time to put my camera somewhere else so that I don't bore my audience with helmet cam footage. The things I do for you guys. Here it comes. It's been out in the rain. You're telling me the chipper died and I think it's got water in the fuel. Uh, I really gotta get a, a building for that stuff. It'll be heavy for you, but you just have to be heavy enough to take it far enough that it doesn't hit the fence. Very good. <laughs> okay, that's rocking this noodle.
One time I, I was hunting over by Eight Dollar Mountain and I I picked up a frog and I was looking at it and then I rubbed my eyes later and I just I no I didn't start tripping but I burned whatever was on that frog just burned my eyeballs it was gnarly it took me a while to realize like what have I done I couldn't couldn't figure it out and then I was all the frog. Some kind of anti-predator thing. It's like, dude, you're good. I'm not trying to eat a frog. Next. Next. That's it for now. I'm gonna hook some more up. Going really fast like this. One more. Well, actually two, but one of them I'm free falling. All right, I'm gonna hook some more up. I'm gonna do a couple free falls here. All right, you're gonna get, I think I'll add one more actually before I start zipping them. Make it worth your while. I'll hook up another one. Looks like you're gonna have one, two, three, four, five, six. Coming at you. Yeah. This corkscrew has a weird way to move. It, it kind of moves like a spring a little bit. I was just reading, I was taking one of my arborist continuing education exams the other day. And they were talking about how the twist puts a big unknown factor for structural integrity into it. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. I've, I've been on so many of those twisty things and I haven't failed any of them yet. I haven't been responsible for wrecking one and I've rigged off huge things. Yeah, that thing, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we rigged some big things off of that. Some smokers. <laughs> yeah, you were on the ground, so you... 
Yeah, we were loading that thing. We were testing it. Uh, I think I'm gonna go ahead and give you a couple real quick. One. Two. I'm still on three bars on my battery. It's like not a very demanding tree for the battery. At least this part of it. Probably switch to gas when I go to chunking that bigger stuff down there. Sometimes that twisty grain stuff will pinch the bar. Yeah, when you're cutting chunks, it's got like grain reaction in it that wants to bind. Slice cut it into the neighbors. Uh. Talk to me, you two. What are you thinking about over there? My little video class that I started to join. I made a join button that cost 15 bucks a month. And I've been teaching, I just started really getting into how to edit video and it's starting to get fun because I found this program I could use called OBS, which basically records everything I'm talking about and everything Thing the audience is asking and all of the maneuvers I'm doing it, it's recording my screen all right Jeff and uh, and so I can like edit video uh, uh, by the way I think I'll do that maybe Friday during the day sometime anyway I can edit video and I can just show people exactly what I'm doing while I'm doing it uh, When they're up that high and they fall straight down a long ways, there's like this moment in time where you wonder if it's hooked up. Okay, here we go. You gotta be real careful. check my camera I think I just bombed it
I'd say the top is smaller now. It is seriously go time on zipping this top out. All right, Jeff, coming down. Get ready to wobble the noodle. That was awesome. I mean, the speed line, you don't run any risk of it really uh, locking up, you know? There actually are ways to lock up a speed line, but... Headache. I'm gonna need my 200. I just changed out this carabiner because it it doesn't auto lock. I have to turn it. And I just looked down at it and it was unlocked and sitting there holding me in my lifeline. So I'm gonna either get after it with some solvent or whatever to fix it or I'm gonna pitch it. I just changed it out for one that works. Just a word to the wise. <laughs> the battery saw what I just did I think we should flop it ask her if she found her wallet oh she found it that's great okay thank you see I knew it would be okay my wife was discouraged the other day and I was consoling her and then she, she told me I saw two rainbows today and I thought are those for me and I was like, they were, they were, they were for you. And so ever since then, I've been thinking, show me some rainbows. I want to see some encouragement. Oh, the hanger. Gotta get the hanger. Sighting it over there at those gray tarps on the right. Really? Yeah. I, when I got the rope out, I went uphill. Yeah. Here. Yeah, when I first started sighting, I wanted to aim at the, the inside of my rear duel on the white truck, right where it's pointed. And then I was like, if I aim there, this log's going to be over here. Yeah. So I moved it over to that tarp past the front of my truck in order to get it to hit at the rear duel and that's because I'm sighting from here but the top of the tree was way over way over here